Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I decided to do it. I'm going to do this. I'm going to make anaerobic compost tea. You know, it just seems like a good idea. It seems like it could be a potential huge source of nutrition for my garden. Now, anything you want to that's organic matter, you can put it into the water and let it soak and it can turn into some anaerobic compost tea for you. So what am I going to use? And I'm going to use chicken bedding. Alright, there you have it. A nice couple of scoops of chicken bedding. Okay, this is where I'm going to leave it. In a nice sunny spot where it'll get nice and warm for brewing. And let's start filling it up. I'm going to go get some weeds to add in there. Alright, that's getting pretty full already. Here's the weeds. Alright, so it's the morning or the day after I started the anaerobic compost tea in my trash can here. And after sleeping on it and thinking about it, I decided not to do this. It's definitely not up to USDA organic standards. If you put raw animal manure on your fields or tea made from that manure on your garden beds, then you have a 90 day minimum time that you are allowed to or have to have between when you put it on you applied it and considered safe by the organic standards. 90 days, that's a long friggin' time. And I don't plan on waiting 90 days after I put this, you know, any uh, compost tea on my garden. I don't want to have to wait 90 days. And if it's not put directly on the plants, then, or it's not for a root crop, then it could just be 60 days. Um, if it doesn't come in contact with the edible parts of the plant, 60 days. And that's still too long for uh, my plants. So, I'm not going to use anaerobic compost tea from manure. Worthy of noting, it does already stink pretty strongly. Alright, so instead of the chicken bedding base for the anaerobic compost tea, I'm just going to use plant-based material. Alright, so the main weeds I'm going to start with are just simple thistles. But in general, I'm going to just take all the weeds. Anytime I do weeding in my uh, garden here, I'm going to take all those weeds and just dump them in that blue trash can. So here's my first victim. An interesting side note on thistles is that if you peel back the, uh, the stringy uh, skin, I guess, outer layer of the stalk of a thistle, you get to that nice uh, juicy inside, it's edible. It's practically identical to celery. It's not bad at all. So, eat your weeds when you can. They're actually often very, very nutritious. It's better than I thought it would be. Bon appetit. Well, that's 
suppose that's a fairly decent start for this anaerobic composty, purely plant based. No animal manure. So here we go, let's try out this uh, bucket filling. So this is going to be my first time using weed water. I did test the water some in the lab, but not very much so far. Um, it was just a very low nitrate concentration. It was like two parts per million. Um, I have to double check, but that's hundreds of times less concentrated in nitrates than your typical uh, miracle Grow type fertilizers, okay? They have hundreds of parts per million whenever you mix them at their uh, recommended uh, dilution rates. I just need to go ahead and use the swamp water because well, it's stinking too bad. It's well, the flies deal. really like the way this stuff smells. That's more like this. I don't want to get this mess all over me. As soon as you, you know, water it, spread it out over your garden, the anaerobic aspect of it becomes aerobic because it's a uh, surface area completely exposed to all the air and the soil and and the atmosphere. So. Maybe that takes care of any disease issues or concerns right away. That's, you know, one logical possibility, so. Check, check. Okay, a little voice over here. If you have stuck around to watch all this video so far, then you're awesome. Now, you might be wondering, if the nitrate levels are so low in weed water, then why in the world bother with it, especially given the stink? Man, and I used to complain when the neighboring farms would put out, you know, massive amount of aged manure on the fields and stink up the uh, properties for miles around. Well, now I'm kind of doing a small scale version of that, except for I'm not using manure. I'm just using rotting plant water. Go figure. It stinks. Well, the bottom line is it works. I have tested it multiple times. Perhaps the most direct result I've seen is with growing lettuce in pots in side-by-side -side trials. The weed water lettuces clearly grew much better than the plain water lettuces. Of course, here I'm testing it on corn. And though I didn't manage to film the follow-up, I did see the results of healthier corn. Slight yellowish hues turning back to darker greens within a couple of days on this end that I started at um, because this has gotten the uh, most easily visible uh, yellowish colored corn. Anyways, perhaps the main questions are then, is this stuff worth the effort and the stink? Most people would probably say that it's not worth it, mainly because of the stink, but also because it takes weeks to make. But... Imagine a world in which you know how to make virtually free weed water fertilizer in just one or two days, rather than two weeks or more. And it will be much easier to use and have little to no stink while you use it. Well, that's exactly what I'll show you how to do in my next video. So be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification button so that you don't All miss right, it. So my water hose Thanks. reaches over here just fine. That's awesome. Uh, you know, there's more to fertility uh, than just the uh, ions that are dissolved in water that is easily measurable in classic uh, fertility tests. So that's a whole other aspect of research that um, maybe I'll be able to get into as, as I go. Out of here. Uh. Yeah. 
All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it somewhat uh, instructive or useful. And um, be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Yeah, that's my sample. Oh, my God.